G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach you beginners and advance what you can paint in acrylic. You'll see the size of my canvas and I'll also get some colours running up the screen that I'm going to use in this tutorial. Now this is a black canvas. I've simply got my black gesso and painted it previously and it's dried and I'm going to bring you on over here now and just show you what we're going to put onto it. Now I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but I've got my waterline level, which is down here on my canvas, and I've got an angled cliff face there and an angled cliff face there, and some waterfall coming down and some distant trees and the sky peeking through. So I want to start back and come forward, and I might put a couple of big trees here. Now I want to mix my sky color, which is adding the blue to the gray. So I'm going to grab this gray and gently Put this blue in there so it's like a silvery bluey grey and I might also add some white to lighten it up because it doesn't need to be a very loud bright sky and why I've chosen a black canvas is because the way I'm gonna make the greens and the yellows and the browns sit and I'm pretty sure I'm liking the color of that sky. So let's start crisscrossing this in onto that black canvas. And you can probably see my hill, top of my hills and the trees there. So I wanna get this, I'm gonna start in the middle and it's gonna sit on the black, don't be scared. Now this is probably as much as the sky you're going to see. Watch what I do here. But that's not all I wanna paint in. I need to get over here so if the trees have got gaps in them you're going to see pieces of the sky which we call sky windows or if you're back to front tree windows so i want to bring that down past the trees there and i'll do the same on the other side and you'll get a gist of just where i'm going with this painting now do yourself a favor and watch the video a few times if you want to paint this tutorial and set yourself up and know which way you're going to do your version of it and we'll get going you can get going from there now what i want to do i've got no retarder in this it's a bit dry and chalky i'm just making sure that it's got beautiful full lengths of brush strokes through it there's no stop starting pieces within there and now what i want to do because that sky is all the one value i want to get the lower half more brighter or brighter not more brighter so i'll grab some of the white over here and i'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in it just to warm it up give a bit of warmth in that sky there and i simply want this at the horizon and you'll see just how this different color gives the sky lovely values it's not just one color it's just got vibes of greatness within it i feel so i want to push that left and right and i'm going to play with that now just until i'm finished with it so i'm still getting it onto the level where i want i'll even get a bit more white in there there we go. And we've got a hint of yellow warmth in there as well, which I'm very happy with. The blue's still a bit rubbery and damp, which is good. It's allowing it to blend quite well. And that's it, beautiful little sky. Now that's had a dry. I can stamp my next layer of trees on there. And I've got like, it's an antique green color, like a green gray. I wanna use this just for the very distant trees. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna use this flat brush now this coming there and this coming there so these trees are going to go beyond so I'll start before I don't want to get any of this on the lower section so what I might do is just put a bit of tape there that's going to be there so I want these I'm I'm working on the height where the height of these trees are kissing into the sky that's all I'm concentrating on at this moment so I'm going to bring them now and they're all distant so Let's see how sharp, I want them sharper than that. So what I'll do, I'll just get the, like I said, the bits where they're kissing the sky first. And then I can come down and then block it in the way I want. So it's pretty much coming all the way down to a point because they're on a hill and it's going to create, um, what do you call it? Oh, what's that word? Perspective. So these are me distant trees, just like that. I've got them hitting the sky. The bit where they're hitting the sky is what I wanted to control. Now the bottom, where roughly where the tape is, let's say, I wanna get that a lot darker now. 
So feather it up. So you, from about just under halfway and to the top, it's all starting to open up. So too easy and too easy, I say. It is easy when you've practiced as well. It's all practice, I reckon, yeah, you're right. I am grabbing some of the yellow ochre. I'll wet my brush. Just so as I can change the value of that um, green grey colour, antique green. If you don't have it, just get a green and put some grey with it till you get that vibe of what I've found here, okay? Now, if it's not going to sit on, I'll have to dry it. But I just want some of this within there. Not everywhere, just bits and bobs here and there, just so it doesn't look like a plain green boring piece coming across the page there. It's just not one colour now. It's got substance to it, I feel. Can we watch you pull that tape off, Ian? Well, I wasn't going to pull it off, but I will, because I just realised when you said that I don't need it anymore. So we'll pull that tape off. And now they are slowly in the background. There's another plane flying. Now you can see this pencil line I added over the sky, and there's another line here. All this is the rock cliff type of stuff, but this, this line and that line is the top surface grass green area. But just above this line here is I want to block in those trees now and then they'll be sat back with everything coming forward. So I've got Viridian Green and I'm picking it up on a filbert brush because I'm going to try a filbert brush now just to see if I can get my pine trees looking more piney because these ones are closer. And what I'll do is I'll want to come just in front of there. So I'll put maybe one there. Okay, something there. Okay, and then I'm putting the main guts of them there first, just like this, and also getting the height, because some of these are going to come a little bit higher as we come out. Right about there somewhere. Okay, now I want to chisel this brush up. Let's say this one here. And I want to, I'm going to come down one side and try, because as a lot of you know, I'm not the best at these trees, but I'm just trying my darndest. If you don't try them, you'll never conquer them. Now it looks a bit bony and malnutritioned at the moment, but we'll get there. Come down the other side, try and make it look sustainable, believable like this one here, there we go. Those little ones I'm gonna do with a detail brush because it's getting a bit too small with this one now, but those bigger ones to the left, I can just drop them in real quick. So let's say I've come there and I'm coming across. We can scratch in a bit of a trunk if we feel we need some depth in there. But this color on its own is its own color I want these to be. Just a little bit of sky in between where they're overlapping. And with a bit of luck, it'll make sense once the painting's finished. If it's your first time here, give me a comment, say hello, tell me where you're from, and I'll say hello back to you. I read all my comments. Like I said, these trees here, I'm gonna use a detail brush just so as I can get some believable <laughs> smaller ones out there. Just mucking around with them. So this is what I'm gonna to do to these ones, so. Just kind of giving it a bit more charisma and oomph and bullshitism. If you're the first time watching me and you hear me use the word the bullshit or bullshit effect, that's just my bigger way of saying, wow, like, bullshit, that looks good. That's my bullshit effect. So I don't want you to think I'm being flippant and rude and swearing because I'm saying it in a soft, polite way. I'm not being aggressive and angry with it. Now before I highlight them, see the bottoms where they all are. I want to, I just thought of it, I'm going to try. So I'm going to just get this brush. It's, I'm going to just get a bit of paint on it and maybe the tiniest little bit of white within it. This is off the canvas. A little bit more. Okay. And what I want to do, I'll pull a lot of that off now. In between there, I'll start here. I'll see if I can get a little bit of, oh, this brush is pretty flimsy. I just want to get smoky colour. So when I highlight these trees, this wishy-washy stuff that I'm putting on now 
we'll look behind. See here, it's just gonna fill that in a bit more. Practice doing misty stuff like this. Get yourself some cardboard. The best practicing that costs you nothing, cardboard surfaces, is a cereal packet or something of the sorts, and turn it inside out, and you use the inside color of it. That's perfect for practicing all, t all types of um, artwork in your acrylic. We'll even get a, just not too much here, just a little bit. Now I want to put in my trunks into these trees because they've got no trunks. So we want to make them look lively and, you know, like I said, we want that bullshitism effect going on within them. I'm just getting the top of that mist a bit more airy, not so hard. There. Now I've got some burnt umber. I'm going to use that brush. I've cleaned it because I can get a nice trunk like that. And I want to get, because I want it to be like a black, but not pure black. So I always like to sometimes mix the burnt umber and the black together. And just some of these main trees, like this one here, it's just got a, let me lean on my mouse stick. And we're just going to come up. Get his trunk just in there. A little bit thin as he goes to the top. Uh, this one can sort of come there. A little bit thicker. That one's a bit hairy on one side. Okay. It's had a dry. Back to me filbert and to some of this, I've got yellow here now. It is cadmium yellow light, not medium. Medium's more warm, this is more cool. I want this vibe going on. I'm getting some water on my brush. Just so as I can highlight some of those trees and sit the trunk back. So, uh, not everywhere. I want to come from the trunk and try and sit on the tops of that dark green and sit some of that mist that I put on there back. So I'm coming, hopefully the camera is picking this up. I'll get a bit done and we'll see how we go. Now you want your paint wet enough so it's going to come off your brush and stick to your canvas. If you find it's not coming off, uh, dry your work. Uh, just gradually dampen it. If it's too thick, it'll be very hard to come off. So I'm just getting them highlighted. But you mainly got that viridian green housing the bulk of the tree. It's coming in front of that moss and it's slowly, if you notice, it's slowly sitting that, not moss, that misty thing we, we just put on there. I might need a smaller brush for these trees, which I think I will. Now, grab the yellow and really, I'm gonna need a bit more water. We really wanna get a nice strong yellow green going. Yeah, that's okay. Just get certain areas highlighted with this real yellow green color here. So just getting, where are we? I want the, the tops of these really Yellow. I'm going to go to the right hand side, a bit of the back side. Now, if you look, you do not want it too watery, otherwise you're going to see through it. So I'm going to add a little bit of white into that because I feel it's a little bit too watery. And the white will just give it a bit more grunt. Look at that. Now these are tiny little strokes, but uh, where are we? Oh, I want this all radiating with bright light up there and then cascading down. Get rid of those dots and make them look more realistic. Can I look in my monitor? You can see what's happening. The light's coming through the valley and it's, you, you might, as you're doing it, you might think, I don't think anything's happening the way it should be. It's not looking right, but when it is finished, it's got the bullshit going right on. Now I want this about all around here somewhere. So I want to come down along here. The top of this is really filtered with a lot of light and it'll fade because this shadow will come down that way type of thing. Oh, and I've missed a tree there. Don't worry, I would have told you that you missed one if you did, Ian. Yeah, I know you would. That's little buddy, those people who don't know. Every now and then he pops in and says his little bit. But he's harmless. 
Now this paint, because I'm using a little brush, it can be a bit thick, because it's just going to like blob on and off the way you manipulate your brush. They're different. Get a bit of light in there somewhere. How's that looking? It's not too bad. A little bit of light filtering on these two end bits here. And watch the video all on this procedure, how you feel you can do yours. Watch it a couple of times and then when you start, you're not going to be sort of, where is he going now? What's going on? You, you'll be aware. You'll know what's on in my mind instead of wondering. Probably get a bit of this filtering up in there as well with some of the light. I'm putting it on. I'm just, you can use a brush. I'm just using my glove because it's there. And I'm just kind of trying to see what this looks like with bits of that yellow light hitting it as well, or yellow green light. I think I want to grab this color again and bring it back down and join it. So oh, I'm doing that. I'm just coming from there now and just kissing that yellow green color that I put on down a bit because it's a bit too proud, I feel. This one here is black, but it's black gesso. That's carbon black, but this one here is the one that dries like a chalkboard, matte color, very matte. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing this color just to replace what I went over. And it's important that you do this if you want some cracking bullshit in your work. Because see, where's that's the bottom line, the top line. So what I want to do now is start painting the top line, imagining I've already got the color on there, the green. So I'm putting this on like this, sitting it back, because we need this to be black. So there, and then we can just rub all that back in, okay, in there. And watching this part of the video will give you a sense and understanding of why and how you need to do it. Where's that line there? It's about there. So I'm getting rid of all the, see all these little white bits? We don't want them. We want that black again. Trees. Whatever's going to be here, I'll, I'll get this line done first, but I don't want it straight. I want it kind of up and down as well. Getting rid of all that white there. This is fun. Down to here bush thing that'll do make it a bit naturey something like that okay we got rid of all the whites now this can be dried as well and then we're ready to start coming forward now we have two layers one here and one side here this one's in front so we'll leave that for later let's get this one in behind first the way we need it then we can bring this one in front of it I want to make this main depth face here. It's all going to be dark, full of depth, but I want to use some dioxine purple down here with some black. So I'll grab, I don't know, I'll just grab a square brush, a flat brush. Now that, I'm just going to see what that looks like on there. That's okay. And I want to try, where are we? Get some of this real deep along here. So I'll, I'll get it on, let it blend up dry and powdery like I've, I've put it on here right and then my brush is slowly wearing the paint off it and I'm going to scrumble it up into there into buggery so it's like getting all dry and powdery looking now I'm getting the bottom of that down I'm pushing it down as well I'm just making it not too I don't know ungood I'll... now I'm going to grab some of the black not the Gesso black, the carbon black. I've just got that. I didn't clean my brush, which had the purple in it. I've just grabbed that because the black on the canvas, which is all here, I want to come there. Where, where are we going to, let's say here. I want to get this on now. There's my bottom line there, somewhere around there. And I want to get this on and then let this fade and scrumble into that purple. Okay? Just so as it's not, if I left just the, black gesso as the black it's going to look powdery and like mm, what's wrong this that girl's walking around with no eyeliner on her eyes she's got all makeup on but no eyeliner that's the vibe your painting will be putting out there if you left it like that i feel there we go and i also want to get some of this traced in here like i'll show you what i mean coming up 
I'm making wavy, willowy. See the angles I'm doing with the camera picking that up? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, I could see my monitor there. That's great. So here, I want to come down, wiggly, get all this so as I can create roundness, bull nose, roll form to the edge so it doesn't look flat. Now, before we put the top on, there's going to be a bit of mist here, but we don't want it just dark like that. I want to put some hint of the greeny of the greenery within there, but it needs to be out of focus. So I'll just wipe that brush maybe. Let's see, I'm just wiping all the paint off it. I didn't wash it. And this color here, let's see if we can get some of this because the, the black that's still in it's gonna dim it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Don't want it too wet though, okay. And I wanna just get some of it tossed in here, so maybe some of it there, sit it down, watch what I do here, put it on, see that's pretty loud, and I'm sitting it down, it's just going to be out of focus, how's that looking? Now it doesn't look the colour I want it to be on camera, but it is the colour in real life, so forgive the camera, see I can scratch this in, look at that, that's even a better way, doing it like that, just getting some of this hinted in there, move along a bit there, I don't know, that one I could have done the same way, just scratch it down would have been better. There's just bits of moss and greenery under that damp cove of the cliff there where all the mist and water's hitting up. So back down here, I've got the cad yellow medium now, not the light, you can see the difference in the two. And I've got my viridian green, bringing it over, loading it into my filbert, and now I want to trace that into it and get that Brilliant emeraldy, uh, fluorescenty, yellowy green colour going. I want to use this first to darken it up. So we'll grab some of that on its own. Lightly does it. I want to wear. So my waterfall is about there. So I'm going to have some of this scratchy, very scratchy. Now I'm going to do a bit and just see if my camera is picking it up. So I need to leave enough of that black in there. This is billowing on the top. I'm doing it like filbert tree style canopy stuff here. Now is the camera picking it up? It is just, so I want to bring this down, but this is, like I said, this is just blocking it in. Scratch it a bit, keep your brush chiseled the way it's working for you. Get right above that black, there we go. See, I got right above it. We're going to have bits of it tracing down as well, like so, leaving bits of black here and there. Okay, so coming along there, that green that we put on there, something there. Where else can we go? Somewhere down here, just tracing down. There we go. Now this has had a dry. Before we bring that to life, we need to get the water in there so as we can sit the highlights over it, making the water look like it's running under the foliage instead of it on top of it. I've put a dob of turquoise here, but is that the color I want it to be or is that too green? No, that's okay. I want it white, but I want it tainted with some of this turquoise, okay? So I'm gonna bring a lot of this soft body titanium white over here now, and I wanna create my water. So I'm using a flat brush that I can scratch in some effective, easy water. Now I'm just gonna roughly run in the lines of water so I can put the mist and then this waterfall can come over it. So we're gonna probably have, you know, where's that waterfall? I'll, I'll just put the bulk of this in for now. So somewhere around here is gonna be that waterfall. Water tracing down just like so. With bits of black in between it. Okay, because when I highlight everything, it is going to sit everything down. Now see how I'm painting this water? It's controllable, it's easy to do. You don't have to be nervous like, you know, in the early days you learn with a fan brush and hope you get it looking straight and perfect. Now over here I've left a gap because I want some kind of water just coming out. I'm using just the corner of this brush, see? I want it coming out and down on the rocks there, a little bit 
probably all the way across the top there as well. And it's just dribbling down in between the crevices there and there. A little bit coming around here. Because our highlights of that green will really sit this down as well. Let's get some of that there. And that's going to create some kind of pool in there. Uh, we could probably get a little bit here somewhere, just very lightly. There we go. And maybe something pulling up there. I'll do this one first. So I'm gonna get the brush on its edge. Oh no, I'll come to here. I wanna come down to about, where are we about to, to that point. So I'm just gonna come down like that. I've got it there, see how easy that was? Now I'll make some of it more prominent and dark. So where it's coming, look. Because that bit I've just put on first is pretty much like mist. And these waterfalls are not full of power. They've just got enough energy to look beautiful. Nice and straight just straight down I'm on my trees there but I don't care I've just come straight down like that before it's coming down there we go and that stuff here we put on you don't want to cover that up with thick heavy water uh, where are we now we're going to do some more prominent get the brush on its edge again and just do this but before I do that too much, I'm going to have to go down the bottom and put in my mist. I like doing little stragglers of things, you know. Straight down. Our water's going to be here. There's the top of it. See, I just painted that in. So easy. And then I'm going to bring it down. Pull it from there and just come straight down in. Oh, better do it this way. In a nice straight line. This first bit can be a bit airy, so I'll just come there. In a nice straight line. There we go. Now Get it nice and straight in. There we go. Right out like so. With bits and bobs coming from the cliff. It's going to come out like that. But what I want to do is get the mist. Get the mist on there. So as I can put the prominent bits in front. This here is going to be right out here. Now I'm grabbing my little scrumbling brush and I'm just getting it contaminated with enough paint to make me mist and I want the mist just all around here so there's my water level about there okay of the the lake so we want to come from about there and I want to try and make this as airy as possible so we'll come up to about here some of it's coming off this waterfall off the side of it there we go, look how easy this is. Work out the pressure. See how we get these bits? You'd want to try not to get them if you can help it. And we're just getting all that. I'm starting from the surface of the water and coming up. Can I have a look in there? That's okay, not too bad. Uh, no, my tree's going to be there, so I want a, a nice piece of... What is it? Mist behind that to really sink it back and give it depth. We can see a bit of the purple in that, which is fine. I like that. And where's the other side of that tree? Oh, here. Oh, here. There's not much on my brush. Look. Now I'm rubbing soft, a little bit heavy because I can feel the paint wearing away. There's my water level to about there. Coming up here somewhere. There we go, get rid of those whiter lines. And look, when I detail that with a little bit of highlight, that's done and there's just so much detail and bullshit going on there. It was just so easy to do. So back with me other brush, I'm getting this water for, I don't know, as detailed as I can. 
so as I can start onto the next section. Now I can put pure white with a lot of this. Getting there, oh, he ran out. Now back to this cadmium yellow medium and the viridian green. We've got this beautiful iridescent green type of color here. Now let's start getting the top of this lightly, lightly, just so it's so airy. Coming down but leaving the bottom half dark. On top of that, leave your dark colors there. Don't hide all your dark colors. Oh, that's a bit thick and hard there. I want to get this on, but the very top bit, once I finalize that, I'm going to put a bit of white with it just to mint it up a bit because it's got a lot of light up there. I don't want this to clash with what's above there. Where are we? I want to get something here, right in front of there. In front of that water, trace down there a little bit, sit that down so the water's coming out from underneath the crevices in all these rocks and moss or ferns or water grass, whatever it might be. Down a bit maybe, just hanging. Now with this colour, I just want to add some white, like I said, and mint it up. So I'll pinch some of this white over here and I'll get a side over here, mint it up a bit. Just so it's highlighting the yellow that I put there. And just find your tops. See how I did the trees? Is this white enough or not quite? I'll do a little bit here and have a look. Yeah, I suppose that'll be all right. Now I just want to get bits of it getting hit with light but see how this is nice and fine and hairy that's the way you want it you don't want a big blob like that if you can help it practice getting nice fine hairy highlights in your work and that highlight just looks a lot better getting hit with light radiating down hopefully the photo shows a better view of the colors than what it is in the monitor here some of this getting kissed with the light I um, just went over the colours there because I was just having a look, analysing. I used the Viridian Green because I didn't like those highlights. So I went over the Viridian Green, put some more yellow with it. It's still a bit wet and now I'm just going back with it again because I feel that I went too loud and proud with that colour. That's why I'm doing this but I went too much. And that's what happens when you go too much. And with a bit of luck, this is kind of sitting it down, making it look a lot pleasing to the eye than what it was just previously, in my opinion. If you're happy with yours, leave it there. I just feel I made a mistake and I'm fixing it up for you on camera. Now this color here, the cadmium yellow medium, I'm just picking this up with the green there, the viridian green. And I will grab more Viridian, just there. Now it doesn't have to be solidly mixed. It can be marbly, meaning it's still got stripes and whatnot in it. I want to use this as the dark color. So this is all going to, let's just say, start getting this on the way we want. I'm just doing it like filbert tree bush shape stuff. Come up here, make this thing, leaving some of that darkness within that thing there that you did. Coming in front of it. Bringing this down in front of your waterfall there. There we go. Pretty much down to about here. There's a tree there, so I'm not worried about covering that up. And where are we? Well, I want to get real big pieces just leafing through there 
leaving the darks in there please do leave the darks in there and this is going to sit that waterfall back now because these are right over that there's a lot of this stuff right in front of the waterfall there cascading out over the cliff face where are we let me look in my monitor so i can get a gist of what's happening yes and see i want this like it's hovering above that mist in front of there there we go just like that where are we this one can look like it's hovering as well leafing out like so i feel i want some real long ones coming down here long green bits of fern wet foresty type of life down here somewhere just get some of this nice down there how's that looking in the camera there that's not too bad is it eh? see how easy that i love doing that so that color i've got on my brush i just want to bring over here and mix in a ton of yellow with it now and this can be marbly as well now dry your work if you feel it's too wet because if it's mudding up on you you need to dry it now that bush that i put there i want to put it behind and how i'm going to do that i'm just going to grab this hitting the top radiating the top of this stuff leaving that dark bit there if you can help it and then just coming right past it now this bit here that's coming out i want to leave that dark and i want to bring that in front there so it looks like it's got that vibe going on is that working or am i yeah that's okay the top of it's brighter and that's because i've wet the paint a bit more and it's transferring a lot of light hitting this bottom bit down here come beyond that color as well pushing that bit darker and then coming over these bits here just sort of pronouncing the stems of those solid pieces there just like so get this thing whatever it is it's some kind of sh shrub i tried to make out there all right grabbing our turquoise again and we want this quite dark first so i'll do the dark vibe of it first so i'll grab this and my water line was about here somewhere so we'll get that reasonably level boom does that look level on camera it looks crooked and see that does not look turquoise in the camera but it is on the that's weird i want this wet your brush a bit in no worries i want this let's get this again level 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 come up here a bit higher there we go there we go there we go where's my tree somewhere about there boom now what i want to do is brush that in kill all that white that came down with it brush it in where are we about there Ugh, get it on there get it on there okay now we're going to add some white with it so we want to grab some brighter values of that over here and i want to do these left and right horizontally onto the canvas let's try this first yeah just scallopy up and down like so and if you feel your white's running out stop and reload your brush where are we i don't i want to leave a nice darker bit there i can always add the darker back but i want this like that i will grab another flat brush and i'll just gently come across oh yeah look at that nice dry brush nothing on it Oh, it went a bit high there. Not to worry, we're going to have more mist there anyway. There you go. That is water fired enough. Now, before we put the mist joining onto the water, I want to put the reflections of the waterfalls in the water. Grabbing uh, the white and turquoise colour, which is pretty much the same value as that. 
these ones here, like here, I just want to come from there. Oh, that's too much. See how sharp it is? I'm wiping that off. Because I want it. There we go. I want it here. Let's get this. There we go. Like that. Just the hint of it. Like that. Like that. Like, oh, get it straight like that and like that. Back. Because that's all about there. Now I want to grab the scrumbling brush and put the mist in again. So I'm just grabbing the, the white, not much on it, because where this joins from about probably all the way here. Get a lot of it off the edge there. And create your mist onto the water as well. Up into your waterfall there. And underwater. Okay, that's looking all right. That's looking great. I like it. We've got different values of mist. This is more white now. The first bit of mist, I think, had the tainted blue in it by memory. Because this is more brighter, which is what I want. And I'm going to fix this. See how this waterfall reflection looks a bit iffity affity? I'm going to fix that up because I don't like it. So grabbing just the turquoise, I want to make it straight. Where are we about there? Trying to make the edges of them more level instead of crooked. I feel they looked a little bit crooked. And this is just helping that to happen. I need a little bit of water on there. All the way across, all the way across, sinking them down. Okay, now I'm just grabbing the pure white and I want to get the, where are we? Let's say the, the, the brow of that bit nice and white. The brow of that or the forehead of that. Nice and bright. And then the ball of this, I want this nice and white as well. Coming down. Can I look in my monitor? Is that, yeah, that's looking more watery. And see how easy waterfalls are. When you know how to do them, they're great. I'm happy with that. Now I've grabbed the black and the burn number again. We're on a flat brush. I've got a bit of water with it, so it's quite sharp and inky. And we'll simply put the foreground into this painting now. Watch this, we're gonna sit things back. So let's go from about there come up. I want it nice and straight so if I can get this coming down. Nice and straight, beautiful. Nice big tree there. Now use whatever brush you can get this tree blocked in with. I'm just choosing to use this one. This is going to come all the way down nicely around there boom and it's going to come all the way down where are we and i want them coming down there like that lock all this in now out here, before we put this tree in, I just want to get some rocks. Uh, let's, whereabouts, probably about here. I want it nice and flat for now. One about there. Well, watch what I do here. And the other one's going to be about here. There we go. 
Now this can come around a bit too, not too flat, otherwise it'll look wrong, I just feel. Now this, this is a rock. Nice rock there. And another rock coming up here. Boom. Now because it's reasonably close, we don't want the bottom of it flat, otherwise it's going to look like it's a cardboard cutout sitting on our water. So where I feel I want my roundness of it, I'm going to go like that. Get it nice and sharp. Now I will paint this tree in. So this tree is pretty much on a kind of an angly arched base, not flat. Like I said, if it's flat, it's going to look like a cardboard cutout laying against your lake there. And we're simply going to bring this where we want it. So he's coming down there, bang. And he's going to come up here. Nice big thick trunk. He's going to have some nice light reflecting on it too. I want you to get used to putting light in your... Where are we? Coming down here. Boom, right off the painting. All right, I'll, I'll get that there. There we go. Now I'm just going to block that in off camera so I don't bore the living buggery out of you. I want to put some um, background stuff in there and before I do, that rock that I made, I'm just going to grab some of this colour that I had, which is there, and I want to just put some white with it. Is that white any good? Is it skinned up? Where's more white? Here we go, over here. So I'll just bring some of that over here. And I just want to grey, a bit more darker. There we go. And we just simply want to find your rock, so our tree's there. I want to kind of get to the top of it and just scrape your rock down come this way with a bit of a rock right in front of that bit there there we go and always have the base of your rocks dark because there's shadow where it's meeting the water that's not quite flat enough there I might have to get that a lot flatter tints in a bit more brightness within that color just so as it like here watch really emphasize light hitting bits other bits of it here and there you know right across there over there maybe a bit on that bit i'm going to fix the bottom of this little one down it's not straight enough and hopefully i don't keep going a month of sundays with it. there we go come on i'm going to get the bottom of it straight there we go now, if you've lost too much dark, like I feel I might have here, I'm going to simply redo it with this while I've got the brush here and get some, just wobble up some darkness within there. Wobble it up, see if that's a word. All that darkness up. You can even put little cracks in it if you want. I've just cut this tree back in front of that rock and while I'm doing that, I thought I might put some kind of rock here as well, just in front of the tree, because I want to give it a bit more simple detail. There'll be a couple of rocks there. So I'm grabbing the Viridian Green again, and I've got the Cad Yellow Medium there as well. Just because behind here, I want some kind of mossy business something going on there uh, maybe a bit of something just there we go something like that i'm picking up some of the yellow now it can be scratchy like so and i just want to create this mossy kind of vibe there and then on this these are like a fern i suppose some kind of fern vibe just growing here. Now dry it if it's not sitting as well as you would like it to. There we go. Actually, what I think I will do, just get one bits of it popping right up here as well into that 
dark. There we go. Some of this can have more yellow on it. Grab yourself a script liner and join that fern with, I don't know, just your darkest. I've got a bit of black there somewhere. Here we go. Bit of black. And I'm just going to lace a little bit of white so it'll have some kind of grey shadow. And probably... And kind of give some vibe. Some kind of trunks out here. Little little sticks holding this business up, whatever it is. It's just a gap filler in my opinion. But let's get you all the way over here. There we go. Is my camera picking those little trunks up? Now I've got me burnt umber and raw sienna with me flat brush. So what I want to do is start putting the colour onto the tree now. I've put some tape onto the side of the tree there so I don't go over. Now I want the tree brown so I want to just scrape it on, right? Where are we? Because I need some of this wet. I, you can see the colour underneath as well, that's fine. And I want to just stop it about there. So there, because... I want this on, so when I put the lighter colour on, it can scrumble into this. So where's that colour again? Okay, so where are we? And we've got darker bits there. And that can stay very dark down there. And then the same to the other tree. I want to, mainly this right side is going to be this colour, but the left side here is going to have some light hitting it. So we're using just the burn number and hopefully what I have in mind will work. Now I want some of these bits, where are we? Coming down like so. Where else we can probably come down like that. That's it. Now wiping my brush only instead of washing it. I'm grabbing this raw sienna. I'll grab it on both sides. And I might have to add some white to it as well. The side of the tree now, watch. It's on. Coming all the way down that side. Nice and sharp to the edge. And then let it scrumble into that wet burnt umber colour. You can see how that's got... Oh, it's burnt. It's light. It's... It's beautiful. Uh, probably a little bit there. Oh, that'll do. So that colour was wet. I want to quickly go to the other tree so as we don't lose the vibe. And this is going to come all the way from about here. Right sharp against the edge. I need a bit more on my brush. Get it nice and sharp against the edge. Right down there, coming around here. And then blur that into that wet burnt umber colour as well. And we've got a nice... Yeah, I've got some of this here on that bit that come down there. I want to have a look. That's looking beautiful. I don't like the way it's just stopped there. So what I want to do is kind of feather it a bit more with just some simple bullshit appeal. My brush is not flat enough. Come on. I didn't want to come all this high with this light colour on this tree because it's where its position is, but that'll do. Gotten rid of that. Can we watch you pull that tape off, Ian? Alrighty. That way we've just got a nice, sharp right side of our tree we didn't go over. Now, before we put the growth on those trees, I just, those rocks that I said I put in there, just creating a stone coming out and another one here coming out and maybe one there somewhere. And a little bit extra white just to promenade 
this here. There we go. I don't want it too white though. If it's too white, it'll look a bit. Uh, what happened? And you don't want those what happened type of vibes within your painting. They look like stones. Now I'm grabbing the Viridian Green again, and from here, I'll leave the bottom. I want to get this growing up the tree. So let's, where's that bit there? Come up there a bit. Leave that brown there, come up there. If it's growing up the tree. This is just the under color of all this moss and growth that's uh, what do you call it mold and moss growing on the tree because it's so damp here and all sorts of things are happening so we've got that there picking up the yellow on one side of the brush again but more yellow now look at that okay lightly does it leaving that darker green to make this have depth now the, the darker green is a little bit wet, which I don't mind. I can sort of give some little pools in it as well to give it more of a, a mossy, damp, moist vibe about it. All the dampness and the moistness in the bottom of this is looking really nice. I love it. Let's not go too yellow. I've got to look in my monitor here and just have a look at this. I'll do the other one off camera. Can I have a look at that? I'm grabbing some of the darker colour again, just to mix with some of that there, see? And it's going to kind of wishy-wash it to the... so it's not so stampy and hard. It looks mossy. That's what I'm going for. Scratch it up, get it in that light. So I've got the darker colour on one side of my brush here. And like I said, I'm coming up the trunk. Where's that there? Well, leave that dark colour there. Pull it there. Lots of it coming down here. Now this is very grassy here. I'm not worried if that yellow bit hits it because it's going to probably do what it needs to do anyway. So I'll make the, the top, there we go, how's that working? Bit of moss. Coming up the tree, I said I was going to do this one off camera but if I can help it but like I, I wasn't able to help it. Some of the moss getting hit with light come in there it's a darker green underneath it I'm just grabbing some of the tainted white because oh here is a bit bright And around here, we need little bits of water here, very gingerly, if you can pull it off. I've got bugger all on my brush. Pressing very light, but I'm just trying to get that tree into the water there. And the rocks. I'm grabbing black and water in my script lineup. Let's just say on this tree, we'll bring some nice thin things, just jaggling out like that. Like that. Now, see, I've come to the side of the tree at the moment, but don't stay to the side of the tree. Bring some of them, watch this, from the tree. And just bring some of them out, down, forking. Just like so. And we want bits of this 
over the trunk and coming down. Just like that. Try and make him look half decent here, will you? Get one about here somewhere. I'm just going to sign it and then we'll take the tape off to reveal it. And I want to thank my YouTube channel members who support me every month and my Patreons who support my Patreon platform every month. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Look at the links below. There's a lot of links there you need to understand what's inside them. too shabby it's a kind of a forest uh, rainforest water scene with some trees and distance bit of warmth right up there in the sky I like that and I know you can do it well that was beautiful vibrant and fun to do if you like what I'm doing you tell your friends but if you don't like what I'm doing hey you tell everybody and also check out this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you